This is Optimal Living Daily Relationships, Episode 81. When Change Seems Impossible, Try This by Lisa Merlo Booth of lisamerlobooth.com. Hello, Relationship Optimizers. Thank you so much for joining me here on the Relationships Edition of Optimal Living Daily. I'm your host, Joss Marie, and this is the show where Justin Mullick hand selects articles from some of the best relationship blogs in the world which I have the honor of narrating to you every weekday for free. Today, I have a post from Lisa Merlo Booth of lisamerlobooth.com. One of our listeners here on the show actually recommended this author, who we've featured a few times now. So please don't hesitate to reach out if you have a favorite author in mind that you'd like us to cover as well. In order to help out the show in this way or any other way, just visit oldpodcast.com support. There's an entire list of ways you can help out, whether it be financially or otherwise. We really appreciate any bit of help as you're the reason we can keep putting on this show. So thank you. And with that, let's hear today's post about making change possible as we start optimizing your life. When Change Seems Impossible, Try This by Lisa Morlow Booth of lisamorlowbooth.com. Most people who feel stuck try to solve their problems in the same way. They largely focus their time and attention on trying to change the other person. More times than not, they complain, yell, scream, plead, shut down, defend, rationalize, and essentially do whatever they can to get the other person to see the light. They believe that the reason they do what they do is because their boss, spouse, friend does what they do. I yell because she doesn't listen. I rage because she won't stop nagging me. I'm irresponsible because when I do what she asks, she's not satisfied anyway. Why do it then? I work long hours and do whatever I'm asked because I don't want to get fired. I lie because I don't want to deal with my spouse's wrath. Most problems I've seen in my work are a result of people focusing on the wrong person. We want to fix the other side's issues. We believe that if that person would just stop doing what she or he is doing, things would then be fine. The problem with this thinking is it's totally wrong. The one place where none of us have power is with the other person. I can't change you any more than you can change me. It's a wasted output of energy trying to change someone. It's also a tremendous waste of time. I've seen countless people throw years of their life away trying to change their partner or parent or whoever, it doesn't work. What does work though, every time, is changing you. The more he rages, the more she shuts down. The more he works crazy hours, the more his boss demands that he works crazy hours. We all get into a dance of dysfunction. This dance locks into place and keeps all of us in a dysfunctional straight jacket. We have to unhook from the dance. We have to focus on the part we have total control of, ourselves. If you're stuck in an unhappy situation at home, work, or out in the world, try these three steps to getting unstuck. Number one, assess the situation. Write down the problem in very clear terms. For example, my husband does not help around the house enough. Number two, look at your moves. Get clarity about how you have been approaching this issue and write that down. For example, Perhaps you complain to him about it, repeatedly ask him to help out, and then when the pressure builds, you snap at him. You may then give up and just do everything yourself because you know if you don't, it wouldn't get done. Number three, come up with 10 different possible moves. Brainstorm a list of other possible responses, good and bad, doable and not doable. Some of these might include blowing up first, just doing everything to have peace, thanking him for the times he does help, going on strike, hiring help, and so on. Number four, choose one of your new moves and try it for three weeks. Choose the solution that feels the best to you and is not going to leave you more ticked off. If, after three weeks, it doesn't feel better for you, then choose a different move and try that for three weeks. Number five, do all of the above from a place of strength and curiosity. This is about you getting your power back. 
you've been focusing so much on the other person that you've given him or her too much power and control over your sense of personal agency. It's time you take that power back. Frequently, we forget that we can be our own worst enemy. We are 100% responsible for the life we create, the life we allow, and the life we sabotage. Far too often, we are unconsciously sabotaging the very thing we say we want to create. Don't be afraid to tune in and humbly look at your part in the dance. It might help if you also tried to remind yourself what the other person's pain is regarding this issue. What would you say about why this issue is happening? You don't have to agree with them. However, understanding where they are coming from will help you choose a more effective action to take. One of the pivotal steps to this approach is to do all of the above with a good spirit. Come into this little experiment from a place of curiosity, not righteousness. You are not trying to punish the other person. You are trying to effectively create change by changing the way you respond and interact yourself. In the end, it's important for you to realize that you have more power than you ever imagined. You are never at the whim of another person or circumstance. Simply slow yourself down, take a step back, and look at the problem from the viewpoint of what you can and cannot control. Challenge. Stop focusing on trying to change the other person. Start focusing on taking your power back and changing your moves. You just listened to the post titled, When Change Seems Impossible, Try This, by Lisa Merlow Booth of lisamerlowbooth.com. Thank you to Lisa for letting us share her content, and also to the listener who recommended Lisa. It's always beneficial to hear your ideas for new authors, as we are constantly trying to provide different perspectives on relationship content. If you'd like to help out the show this way by suggesting a new author, blog, or topic, or if you're simply interested in helping out in some other way, come by oldpodcast.com support. We have a whole list of ways to help out the show if you're unsure. Thank you so much in advance for your support. And that's all I've got for today's episode. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I hope to see you again tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's O-L-D podcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.